Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Picture International with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 27th of July, 2023. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. I'll disappear from that little left corner and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so now then, also just before we jump in into the charts, just a quick mentioning of our Easy Markets uh, website, which you can always check out for more information about us, guys. If you have any questions, always you can reach out to us. Now then, um, the Fed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's see what's happening with the markets. Um, look, uh, yesterday uh, the Fed came out. Uh, yes, uh, with the rate hike. Um, again, in a way, it's kind of the same thing that I was talking about, that they're going to, you know, say that they're ready to increase rates again if, if, if needed. And, uh, um, yeah, and but at the same time, maybe they will pause a little bit. So, uh, look, it was, I think it was a little bit on the kind of more uh, dovish side, I think, this, the, everything. And that's why I think the market did kind of react in a, in a slightly more positive way. So... Look, Nikkei 225 pushed to the upside. I think that on bets that, yeah, uh, that, you know, the, they will slow down a little bit and allow the market to kind of recover. However, um, not everything is as straightforward as you think, uh, especially in the market. So at the moment, look, what I'm going to do here is right now, I'm just going to keep continue monitoring this, mm, this territory, this key resistance area between the 32,923, 960 levels. And if that gets cleared, then yes, uh, potentially uh, more buyers here could join in and a move towards this downside line could be possible. Now, um, in terms of the uh, the downside, this, the same scenario remains valid. I need to see a break of this upside line drawn from the low of the 15th of March. And then, yes, we could go a little bit um, to the downside. But at this point, look, we're testing this key resistance barrier um, from the very, very short term perspective. We could be forming something of a an ascending triangle pattern. Will that be the case? We'll have to wait and see. For now, I'm just monitoring this barrier. If we do climb and stay above it, then yes, I'll, I'm aiming a little bit higher towards this downside line drawn from the high of the 16th of June. Um, China 50 index. Um, so yeah, uh, beautiful move. Look, in general, uh, I cannot complain here because what I talked about, I said that if we do clear these downside lines here, then yes, uh, my next target is the 200 day EMA together with that 13,064 zone right here, which we managed to reach perfectly. And, uh, I would say it's a good result here. So quite happy with myself. Now, as you can see, we're seeing a bit of a retracement here. Um, look, what's next? Uh, I think that the best option right now is to just keep an eye on that uh, 13,064 territory. And then, yeah, uh, we could uh, go a little bit higher. If we do break this barrier, at the same time, we would be placed um, above above all of our EMAs and our daily chart. So just uh, let's continue monitoring this scenario. Um, in terms of the downside, well, this is where I need to redraw a few things here. Though this, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it for now here. Um, where's my magnet here? There we go. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do for the uh, for the downside is I'm going to keep an eye on something like this. So this little short-term upside support line drawn from the low of the 1st of July. 
if um, that gets cleared, then certainly, yes, more sellers could join in and we could see a drop below the 12,475 territory right here. Now, if that gets, yeah, like I said, if that gets clear, then I'll, I'll aim for this 12,200 territory, approximately around there. But at the moment, the moment, of course, um, uh, yes, uh, any move lower could be classed as a temporary correction as long as we remain, uh, as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying, as long as we remain above this downside line and above the 100 uh 100 day ema now some of you might say but hey what about this scenario here uh where let's say if we do fall below this downside line yes in a way if you're comfortable with that you can consider a possible move lower here towards this upside line but i think that um be careful i mean there are some obstacles quite important ones and for example this 50 day ema could you know play out but if if you want, I mean, you can keep an eye on that 50-day EMA as well, just for that extra confirmation, uh, if you, you know, for going lower. So yeah, I mean, that could be could be that um, game plan. The only problem, the way why I don't really like this scenario is that look, even if let's say we do retrace lower and we do start testing this downside line. And by the way, uh, if you remember, I talked about this before that. Um, uh, whenever we break a trend line of some sort, uh, either it's an upside or a downside one, we kind of retest it from the other side. And in this case, we have our downside line. If, let's say, this de declines a little bit here, maybe we could retest. Maybe we could even fall a little bit below this downside line. And uh, we could then maybe, you know, hang around here. But if, let's say, by the end of the day, it still reverses and pushes back up, then we'll get ourselves a nice false breakout. Um, so at this point, I would say I am uh, waiting uh, because, again, my scenario worked out uh, because on a break of this downside line, I was aiming for this 200 day EMA. Good result. So now what's next? Well, like I said, maybe, like I said, maybe this could be the game plan or maybe something else could play out. But at this point, look, I'm just observing the price action and I'm not really mm, doing much here because um i'll let it rest i'll let it rest i'll see what how it plays out today uh asx 200 there we go beautiful move here to the upside looking good um okay uh of course yes uh, the positivity kicked in uh the the kind of the fed aftermath yes uh, here is playing out nicely so my target is getting reached the 7407 territory i spoke about this so now the question is, can we go further north? Well, for now, I will uh, will take it as it is and I'll leave it here because I want to see again what's going to happen with this barrier. Uh, let me just mark it. Um, so I want to see what's going to happen with this barrier if we are going to clear it and stay above it. I mean, we already cleared it, but will we stay above it? Well, that's a good question um for now um let's put it this way if you're looking for some further upside i think that yeah it's better to get it let, let it rest and see what it wants to do with this barrier if it wants to stay above it okay great we'll go higher we'll aim for that 7529 30 zone approximately around here if it doesn't if it doesn't want to go here further above this hurdle then um look in even to consider the downside um maybe maybe if we do uh let's say can struggle with this territory with this area right here the 7407 and if it if it d does hold then maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible however if you're looking for some something a little bit more uh more to the downside then maybe Again, this is a tricky one because ideally I would like to see a drop somewhere below this downside line, which we broke previously. But hey, I understand that maybe, you know, there could be a possibility for a drift lower here from this upside line. But look, at this point, um, all eyes are on this barrier right here, the 7,407. And let's see how this is going to uh, stay. I, you know, to be honest, I might even leave it for, uh, for this, for this week just to see what how the reaction will be i mean i really i'm you know after these uh fed days um i'm it's sometimes a little bit difficult because sometimes you get that one-way traffic and some uncertain things do not look uh very logical so 
because again, um, let's say if there was a move like this and uh, some traders who are thinking, oh, you know, I missed the rally. Let's jump in. You know what? Screw this. Let's jump in. And they start pushing it and everything becomes a little bit unlogical and reasonable. So and you need to kind of remember that after like events like yesterday, um, you know, there could be some more you know, craziness. And especially with the ECB coming out today, but just bear with me one moment on that one. <laughs> Sorry, guys, my I had to uh, clear up my throat a little bit. But uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, so this is the uh, situation here. Um, look, we tested that 35,751 territory. I spoke about this uh, last, uh, well, yesterday, last day i want to say uh yesterday um but um look we got a hold up here this barrier is the highest point i think yeah the highest point of february of 2022 of course everybody's looking at um looking at some you know further upside i think that maybe this could be a nice good target um the 36,832. but again of course don't get me wrong uh, you have to get, we have to get there first. I mean, we do have a bunch of other barriers that could play out. And one of them is this one, like, for example, 36,389. But of course, everybody's thinking, hey, but what about the 36,000 mark itself? Yes, of course, could be a good target. But look, we had a good run already. And uh, we're currently getting a hold up near this 35,751 territory. If we continue to struggle to overcome it, then maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible. However, as you can see, my downside scenario is still from around here, from around this 35,350 territory. If we do drop below it, then yes, I'll consider a move a little bit lower. So um, now then, uh, but by the way, I mean, a while ago, I've posted this uh, scenario here and uh, look, it worked out nicely. I talked about this uh, when I, on, on the 18th of July. I said to you that wait for a breakout here because we're in a range. And there we go. It worked out nicely, of course. And uh, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, by the way, uh, just something that we're going to be trying out soon. Um, look, you can throw out ideas, for example, yourselves. And if you can just like tag us here in the bottom somewhere, um, what we're going to do then, we're going to pick um, the uh, the most interesting, as we think, the most interesting kind of uh, idea for that day. And um, I'll, I'll pick up on that in, uh, in my webinar and we'll talk. But at this point, like I said, it's just um, at the moment it's in the trial period. We want to see, you know, how that's going to uh, work. But if you start posting, let's say, some, some ideas yourself, if you do have your ideas, and most likely you do, um, if you, let's say, post something out there, um, just uh, tag us in there and we will uh, try to pick up on that one. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll see, you know, we'll, like I said, then we'll we'll see, I'll see which idea kind of makes a little bit more sense uh, in line with my ideas. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll, like I said, we'll see. Well, I will, I will show this idea on, on the webinar. But um, so, yeah, just have a think about it. If you if, some, if this is something that you know you would really like um now then uh, oh by the way good morning good morning to everyone everyone in the chat room there we go so there we go finally um forgot again uh but look um, s p 500 also good result here pushed nicely to the upside 4600 got reached again so we cleared it we stayed above it and now it seems like my next target could be this 4,630, 31 zone right here. And then, yeah, we could take it from there. Now, um, if we're looking at some higher levels, uh, then um, yes, of course, uh, this is the tricky bit that where it's telling me that, look, um, although I like the upside, but I'm going to aim only for that 4,630, 30, 31 zone. Um, as long as we stay above the 4,588 territory right here. Um, if we start falling back below it, then um, then a drop for me, in, in order to consider a move lower, um, a drop below the 4,557 territory would be required. Um, and then this way I will consider a larger correction to the downside. 
Um, Daredevil Dave, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you very much for your comment there. Uh, good morning to everybody else as well who's tuning in. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful start off Thursday. Um, and uh, NASDAQ. <laughs> uh, oh, Marin, Marin H. Marin H. Uh, 84. Good morning. Good morning to you too. Um, I hope you're also having a beautiful start of Thursday. So, um, right. What's next with NASDAQ 100? And here, I would say, look, this idea so far is working out. We are having that rebound. Uh, we're pushing a little bit higher. <clears throat> now, the question here is for me is, uh, what's going to happen next here? Uh, this 15,857 territory, is, it looks quite good. Um, I'm, going, I'm only going to aim for this one for now because uh, I want to see what's going to happen further. To be honest, I'm, at this point, I'm not really rushing into anything. Um, I'm going to go slowly. I'm going to slowly grind higher. Uh, but yeah, as long as we stay above this uh, 15, from the very short term perspective, I have to mention this. Uh, if we continue to trade above this 15,665 territory, then yes, my next target is the 15,857 territory right here. If we clear that one, I'll go higher. I'll go towards that psychological 16,000 mark. Uh, the German index. Yeah. Yeah. Range. I mean... <laughs> that is beautiful um this is just like look at the decline we had yesterday yesterday we fell quite low here and i mean it it looked like that it's ready to uh break this and um you know ready to kind of move further south but hey the lower side of the range together with the 50-day ema did provide fantastic support and we rebounded from here so in other words we're back to the you know uh back to the drawing table and we're basically waiting for you know a good clearance and at this point i'm not really getting that so yep um in a way when i get something like this and now i'm seeing the futures are pushing you know back up i mean this for me is just uh kind of looking a little bit more bullish than bearish to be honest and uh but again i cannot really get comfortable with that idea yet because i need to see a clearance of that 16,332 territory right here uh the FTSE 100 so oh by the way in terms of dax uh, well guess what today we have the ecb and uh also expected uh, uh a 25 basis point increase okay that's fine um but yeah Let's uh, let's also keep an eye on the um, on the press conference. Uh, you know, Christine Lagarde. Um, yeah, that's gonna come out uh, about what half an hour later. Also, um, in between the interest, ECB's interest rate decision and the press conference, what we're gonna get? We're gonna get the preliminary uh, GDP numbers from US. Um, that's going to be very, very interesting to watch. And also, uh, that could be a market mover. So just be careful. So if you think, for example, when you're, you know, when you got the interest rate decision and then you're waiting for the press conference and then you suddenly see some sort of strong, crazy movement, well, guess what? It's not because of the ECB, it's because of the uh, preliminary US GDP numbers, uh, together with the uh, core durable goods and together with the initial jobless claims. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be quite, quite interesting to watch. Now, the FTSE 100. Um, the FTSE 100, um, yes, I talked about this yesterday. I said to you, look, i um, still going to aim a little bit higher, but as long as this territory near this 7,704 zone provides resistance, not exactly the level, the level, not exactly that one, but just the area near it. If it continues to provide resistance, then this is this is the scenario that I'm going to look at. If we clear this territory, then yes, I'll go higher towards the 7,808 zone, approximately around here, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, US dollar, of course, of course, uh, declined, but look at this, declined, but stayed above this highlighted territory and this is what i talked about yesterday i said to you that we might see a correction lower but if it stays somewhere above this zone here then uh yes uh, maybe we could see a nice reversal back to the upside like that in terms of the downside a drop below the 100.47 territory here is required and if we do get that drop then yes uh, we'll aim for that uh, psychological 100 level or even below that a little bit so at this point i would say I am cautiously bullish, but 
if it suddenly starts falling you know below this 100.47 territory and stays below that then yes i'll consider a bit of a move to the downside maybe not all the way here but initially towards this territory this now this 100 zone together with this 99.87 zone uh gold okay okay gold enjoyed the moment of the weaker a dollar and the, there we go we had that you know uh move higher and i said to you yesterday that look as long as we stay above this 1964 territory i'm i'm kind of leaning a little bit more towards the upside but uh for me to get more comfortable with higher levels of push above this 1985 territory is required so at this point i am just watching this one if we do clear it great i will go higher at this point yeah i'm just taking in uh, taking a neutral stance and just watching the uh, the price action if we start falling below the 1964 territory then that's from where i'm gonna get a little bit more comfortable with some lower levels and i'll aim for the 50 day ema once again and then the 100 day ema um silver uh silver yes popped nicely to the upside look i talked about this idea uh, yesterday and this is one of those moments yeah like this this is what i've posted yesterday here i talked about this and i said that to keep an eye on these barriers um these hurdles here so in order to go or in order to consider the next short-term directional move i need to see a clearance of one of these areas and then uh we could take it from there so look uh we didn't get any of that um uh, we're still waiting so it's the 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 idea this idea is still in play so yep and by the way guys you can also post ideas like these um and as i already mentioned in the beginning of this video that uh you can mm, throw an idea if you whatever you think you know whatever and uh, give some sort of like an explanation here um this is what i do here and uh, just kind of tag us in here and uh put easy markets um and um uh, or also you can tag me i mean that is on the because um and uh then i'll pick up um um i'll pick up on the let's say the one that i think that the more is the more interesting one and uh not that not that all of your ideas are interesting but sometimes you know uh even my ideas sometimes are a little bit way off the, off you know reality and you know common sense so i i do accept that my ideas are are also sometimes a little bit crazy you know but um but hey again depending on the idea some ideas are crazy but you know some of those crazy ideas do work out eventually so i'm just like i said uh, you can like throw out something yourselves and uh, just tag me uh, tag me or tag easy markets in this and uh, I'll, I'll then i'll go and see which ones actually uh which one i will i will pick up on during the next session um yeah so um look look uh silver uh so what what do we have here we're still waiting right that's it nothing else we're still waiting for a nice good clearance of one of these territories in order to uh consider kind of the next uh short-term directional move if we do get that pop up of the 25.27 territory i'll go higher because a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed and for the downside a drop below this zone somewhere below this 24.53 territory is required in order to consider some lower levels uh copper uh copper is something that i don't look at very often but um at this point i think i like it <laughs> i think i like it so but yeah i do like this one at this at, at the moment because look something is building up maybe it's a maybe it's an ascending triangle pattern um maybe but again let's uh let's wait and see um we have a key resistance territory right here with these three levels that i just uh, picked up on and uh look uh in a way i would say keep your eyes on those um for now and uh these could present a nice oppor this could present itself with a nice opportunity if this territory gets cleared so then of, of course obviously we will aim higher forthcoming higher high will be confirmed and maybe we could aim for that 4.20 4 zone or or should i say near that zone near the 4.1943 something like that but okay let's round it up here the 4.20 zone um at the moment also the thing that's supporting is uh, supporting the upside is this uh, we have an, uh, an upside line so in other words a uh, nice beautiful ascending triangle pattern is building up and uh 
while we're remaining here yes we could drift around we could move up and down here but overall forming uh higher lows the only problem that we have right now is to form a higher high well let's see if we eventually get there however although according to all the ta rules uh ascending triangles tends to tend to be bullish indicators actually um i started seeing this uh, working out in the opposite direction so um yeah do not exclude the possibility of seeing uh you know break through the upside line here and uh yeah unfortunately that happens so um that's why uh, while we remain in here in this territory i'm just observing the price action um also just to support the downside scenario 3.78 territory somewhere around here a nice good drop below it may yeah attract uh some uh, sellers into the game and uh, we could see you know a further decline here but again uh, let's get let's examine this again when we are gonna break one of the sides we're closer to the upper side here and at the moment everything's kind of pointing towards some higher levels because again we're keep on we keep on forming these higher lows uh let's see if we can go for a higher high oil uh yeah good hold up so look this territory provided fantastic uh fantastic resistance uh let me just uh you know what let me just grab this one i want to Get rid of it um and I'm, i want to mark this whole zone right here because this this yeah provided fantastic resistance and continues to do so so my question is can we see a um a nice move further north well that of course will depend on this if this somehow bounces back up here then this might actually drift you know go for a correction lower and at this point, look, we're getting a hold up here. So if we continue to, to get a hold up near this highlighted territory, then yes, I will consider a bit of a retracement and a retracement towards this upside line um, initially. If that gets cleared, certainly I will start aiming for the 77 territory or this 200 day EMA, depending on who's going to, which one's going to be first. Uh, but yeah, also, like I said, not excluding, of course, the upside, don't get me wrong, but um, I need to see um the mm, the commodity staying actually somewhere um i think that let me redraw this a little bit i think i would like to see it staying somewhere above the psychological maybe 90 le or 80 level um that could be a good one in my opinion i might be wrong don't get me wrong but um yep uh the psychological 80 zone 80 dollar mark could be a nice good barrier to watch and if we clear that one then yes um more buyers could join in bitcoin retraced yep okay that's fine we retraced back up a little bit but again still the problem remains the 29,500 zone so we're still trading below that uh we had a little kind of spike here above it but hey that didn't really last for too long and they can, can see here that we are still trading below this downside line so in other words look i am still leaning towards the downside but um i would like to see a um kind of a stronger move back below this 50-day ema and then yes i'll aim for the 100-day ema together with this 28,440 zone for the upside uh pretty straightforward the break of this downside line is needed and then i'll go higher ethereum um well we're uh this one's a little bit on the more positive side however well positive ish because we're still stuck we're still stuck between these two trend lines and these two short-term tentative trend lines and i think that yeah uh, even if we break the downside one i would prefer actually to wait for a push of the 1904 or 5 zone somewhere around here for the downside i need to see a drop below the 108 ema that's it that's my game plan for this um i'm just like i said for now i'm just observing the uh the price action ripple uh yes yeah, so good good in a way i reached my area um 0 0.6686 um, where we came very close to that so that's fine everything's looking quite nice here now i'm taking a very very conservative approach here for the downside if i want to go lower that's it simple as this i mean i'm gonna just consider a drop below this and then yes i will get comfortable with lower levels while i'm, I'm not while we remain in here i'm just observing the price action for the upside i would need to see a break of this downside line and then i'll consider a move a little bit higher towards that 0 0.8256 litecoin 
Um, this one's finally doing something interesting. And uh, we are trying to clear that upper side of the falling veg pattern. And look, I talked about this and I said to you that if we do clear it and we stay above it, then yes, uh, potentially there could be some more upside. Well, at this point, we're just clearing it. Look, we still have and we found good resistance near the 50 day EMA. So if you if you are a little bit on the careful side, maybe you could say, hey, you know what? I'll wait for a push above that 50 day EMA. And then I'll, yeah, I'll get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels until this. I mean, maybe this is just a false breakout again. Who knows? So, yeah, I mean, maybe this could still drift lower. Uh, well, but for that, let's, like I said, let's wait and see on this one. But even, let's say, in order to consider the downside, a drop somewhere below this 200-day EMA is needed. And also maybe this hurdle could do the trick, this 87.49. And as nice good drop below it would confirm a fourth coming lower low. So at this point, look, we are, it is showing signs of possible move higher, but uh, we cannot really get comfortable with that idea yet. 80 USD. So jumping into a few pairs. Um, so there we go. We popped above this hurdle. And again, look, we popped above this. I talked about this uh, barrier above, above this downside line as well. This barrier near the 0 0.6795. So in a way, if we do continue to trade above it, then yes, I will go further north but if we struggle like this as you can see here right now and we by the end of the day we still remain below this downside line well guess what maybe actually we're not really ready to go higher so maybe we'll go a little bit to the downside but with the downside scenario i need to see a drop at least below the 200 day ema and then yes more sellers could join in towards the upside line drawn from the low the 31st of may um but yeah that's the simplistic approach on aud usd um, currently monitoring the 0 0.6795 territory. If we do stay above it, then yeah, I'll get a little bit more excited with some higher levels. 80 and ZD. So we're still in the range. Um, look, the same analysis is valid as yesterday. Uh, for the upside, I need to see a pop up of the 1.0930 zone. And for the downside, a drop below this EMA here is required. And then we will kind of uh, go from there, you know. So a drop below this uh, 1.0842 territory as well might do the trick for a few more sellers. And we could go lower within the possible range here. Because let's not forget that maybe this is a nice range, actually, after all. NZD, USD. Um, so haven't looked at this, this one for quite a while, but again, it worked out nicely. So after we broke the... The downside line, the upside line, I said to you that keep your eyes on the 0 0.6247, 48 zone. We will, we if we do clear it, we'll go lower. Uh, we went lower. That's great. So I think that, you know what? I want to remove all the drawings and start fresh. Now, I want to start off with this upside line here, which um, could still work out. Don't get me wrong. It still could be, you know, an interesting one. Um, I will consider a move towards this um towards this ups, uh, upside line um, basically i will consider a correction back down if we first of all there are a few criterias if we continue to struggle with this barrier the 0 0.6248 and also we fall below the uh, 200 day ema uh, then yes i will get comfortable with the maybe a larger correction here to the downside towards this upside line um, around here, of course, we do have uh, the uh, this hurdle, this 0 0.6156. But again, let's not rush into anything. Uh, with the upside, I would like to see maybe a push somewhere above this zone, mm, roughly, or maybe even actually this territory. Yeah, the 0 0.63, um, 0, 0, 0.08, 0, 0.09 zone could be a nice good target. And then we could start targeting this uh, highest point, or should I say the current highest point of July. So yeah, that could be my uh, upside scenario game plan. But at this point, I am carefully watching this this one right here, the mm, 0.6248 territory. If, we, if it continues to hold, if it continues to provide resistance, then I'll watch the 200-day EMA. And then we'll go from there. AUSD JPY. Uh, so this one declined, fell below the 50-day uh, EMA, and look, I said to you before that um, if it's if it drops below the 50-day EMA, I'm gonna aim for the 100-day EMA. Exactly, that's what I'm gonna do right now. And uh, some of you might say, but hey, you know what? If this is if you're considering such a scenario, then maybe the indices could uh, drift lower. Well, I said I'm not excluding that scenario, of course. 
mm, you know, maybe uh, the indices are actually ready to correct a little bit lower, but we cannot really rush into this. Uh, because again, here, if this starts drifting lower, uh, this um, means that the yen buying is resumed and uh, everybody's kind of, you know, getting a little bit scary or not scary, scared. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, but if we consider the fact that the dollar might strengthen, um, my question here is, can we actually climb back above this 50 day EMA? If we can, then yes, I will maybe start maybe considering some higher levels here. This level, I don't think that it's needed anymore. I think that, yeah, just rather stick to that 140.50 territory somewhere around here. And uh, then, yes, if we do climb back above it I will, and stay above it, I will go a little bit higher. Um, Yagnesh Vagain, Vagain 777, hi, BTC. I just picked up on BTC. So this is the list that um, I go through. So look, I'll finish off with this uh, webinar and you'll, you'll have the record session and you can just kind of quickly, you know, uh, scroll through the uh, BTC uh, section. I've, like I said, already talked about it. There's not much happening in there. We're waiting for the US dollar to do some stuff. But um, at this point, yeah, uh, just like I said, I'm, I'm, I just need to continue with the instruments here with my list because I'm going to run out of time and, you know, have to start rushing through the uh, remaining instruments and, you know, closer to the end of the webinar. So just like I said, uh, have a look at the recorded session after I finish this video and uh, BTC is there. Like I said, this is the list normally I go through um every day it's a different uh, slightly different not totally different but slightly different um uh, maybe with you extra change a few few changes but um i normally pick up on indices commodities cryptos and then currencies so that's the you know the path i go through um so yeah usdch chef so let's see what's happening here so far so good um i talked about this yesterday i said to you that if we do drop below the 0 0.8631 territory right here i will go a little bit lower and there we go we drifting nicely to the downside my question is can we reach that 0 0.8555 territory well let's wait and see um at the moment look i'll say it this way as long as we stay below this territory below that 0 0.8631 i'm going to lean towards the downside if we somehow start climbing back up um i will get comfortable with higher levels on a break above the 87 the 0 0.87 territory and then yeah i'll get uh, you know I'll, I'll go from there at this point i'm just observing uh well i'm cautiously bearish and i'm leaning a little bit more towards the downside use the cat uh this one's still in range so um actually i think it's maybe time for me i think it was time a little bit uh, time was earlier i mean i had to do it earlier a little bit but hey better lead than never this this range um we're stuck here and as i said to you before i need to see a clearance of one of these sides in order to consider the next short-term directional move so at this point i'm just playing the waiting game gbp cad um this one's continuing to drift nicely to the upside so i said to you yesterday if we do pop and stay above the 1.78 a 19 level right here my next target is the 1.7148 territory and then we'll go from there um, so yeah, that's my game plan for the upside. Let's see um, if we can, like I said, if we can reach this uh, zone right here. Uh, this is my first target, and then I'll take it from there. That's it. Uh, for the downside, I would like to see a drop back below the 1.69.56.57 territory right here. At the same time, we could fall below the 50-day EMA potentially attracting more uh, sellers into the game. However, the sellers could only drag this one probably towards this upside line initially. Uh, because around here we could also test the 100 day ema and uh, the probably the rate could pause around there until you know they figure out what they want to do further if they want to break it okay great we could go further south um but um you know if we rebound okay that's also fine we'll have to reevaluate things again but at this point look uh, as long as we stay above this 1.70 and 19 territory i'm leaning towards the upside GBP USD. So this one continues to work out nicely as well. Um, yeah, I'm still aiming for that psychological 130 zone. So not the most exciting, you know, instrument at this point, maybe. But I'm just like I said, I'm aiming for that psychological 130 zone. Again, I want to see if we can get a hold up around there or not. In order to consider lower levels, I think that, yeah, I'll just take a, this simple approach and I'll wait for a break 
of this upside line drawn from the low 30th of May. Euro Aussie. Uh, Euro Aussie is, uh, yeah, so, so far it looks so good. Yesterday we climbed above this territory briefly, this 1.6414. We struggled to stay above it and then we drifted back down. In order to go lower, I would say um, I would like to see maybe a Mm, a drop below this lower side of the range because don't forget that we're currently it seems like that that we are forming a range um how long will that play out as a range who knows i don't know yet but um yeah uh this point i would say if you're looking for some lower levels just wait for a drop below this territory below that 1.6250 zone and uh, at the same time we will fall below the 108 ema and potentially more sellers could join in for the upside i need to see a push above that 1.6414 in order to consider a move towards the upper side of this uh of this range euro chf uh beautiful move on not yesterday but tuesday uh we did drift nicely uh i think i need to remove all the drawings here and start fresh actually because yeah it's a little bit um um so yeah uh, just like i said at the moment um i'm just kind of watching this one um look if we don't put any lines yet um at the moment i can see this way that we have moved a quite a lot away from this uh, from the e from the, our emas um at some point we will get back to them of course but the question is when will will we see some more downside for example to maybe towards the 0 0.9407 territory or actually you know we're going to get a hold up somewhere around here or uh, no sorry 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 not this one Maybe we'll get a hold up somewhere around this territory, the 0 0.9525, because look, previously it did act as a good area of resistance, uh, partially temporarily, um, but um, um, again, it's it did it did play out nicely and it did not because look, we had violation here, but then the next the few days after we have a hold up. I mean, so it sometimes does. So I'm gonna keep it on the chart for now, and um, and then. Yeah, I want to see if we can rebound from this territory somewhere. Look, hey, anything can work. But I think that I will get a little bit more comfortable with the upside, maybe from this territory, the 0 0.9576 zone. Or even better, I think, look, uh, to be very, very careful and cautious, I think that my upside scenario would come on a break of this, uh, that, this downside line. And then, yeah, I will consider a move. Uh, towards this uh, towards my emas now i get it some of you might say but hey we're missing out on a lot of territory right here look you can't what you can do here from the very short-term perspective is keep an eye on yesterday's high for example this one near the 0 0.9561 and if we do pop above and, and stay above it then yeah maybe we'll consider a bit of a larger maybe a retracement here back up but don't forget about this little hurdle which could be in the way so that's why it's not really as clear as as i would like it to be and that uh, with the upside from here but if you're willing to risk okay look you can do whatever you want guys the only thing is that promise me you'll have your stop loss in place and you'll have your uh, you know you'll risk only what you can afford to lose because this what could happen here for example you could travel a little bit higher test this area you know start uh you know pushing a little bit higher but fail to move further north and then by the end of the day drift back down create a nice false breakout and there we go congratulations a lot of miserable lives you know uh a lot of miserable buyers in here um so just that's why i will probably leave it for now i'm just gonna maybe let it rest uh, and see how it plays out and then yeah i'll, I'll take it from there um uh marin marin h uh, or marin uh marin uh, 84 84 um there's if time allows it will you explain the indicators on the bottom of your chart and histogram signal macd um yes yeah, so this is the macd um i look i have it in general um i do refer sometimes to uh these uh, indicators and um i sometimes let's say like this when my ideas let's say the my main scenario is my main kind of uh support resistance or or let's say something else or other formations stop working or um or let's say something else is um yeah um not working for example then i refer to some indicators 
I do like them and I don't uh, because look, we have a MACD here, right? I mean, um, this at the, at the moment, I mean, you can refer to it sometimes. Like for example, here, the moving average uh, conversion, di conversions, divergence, right? Um, for example, when we have a like a cross, the, the, the faster moving one crosses the slower moving one, then yes, uh, we know this indicates uh, here a, uh, you know, a, a, a potential drop when the histogram starts falls below zero. You know, incre uh, it shows uh, increasing downside momentum. Um, and uh, here, for example, at this point, you can see that um, in the end of June we started drifting lower and we continue to slide. Um, now um, we're still going lower and there is still potential to move to the downside. But look. Um, the reversal can happen very quickly as well. So, for example, like uh, an example here where it, you know, started reversing sharply to the upside, but only crossed uh, the zero mark only around here, where I would say it was a little bit late already. So, look, it's a tricky one, right? I mean, um, and then, for example, it crossed here. Uh, you can see everybody's, hey, we're getting bullish now, so let's jump in. And people started jumping in here, and they only captured this little uh, move here. What about the remaining here? So, you know, I would probably start looking at some higher levels from around here, maybe from around this 0 0.9823. So, but it's not really in line with the, the MACD here, you know, because, okay, you can say that, hey, what about maybe this slightly brighter one, you know, but it still is a little bit of a tricky one, so that's why it's not always as clear as it seems. As it, you know, as um, unless you have like maybe a huge stop loss, you know, huge you allow the 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 price or the rate to move, you know, you can allow it to move a lot, and then you know you can um, maybe you know just play around with the indicators because again, sometimes don't forget that you also get the. Um, uh, what's the word for that? Oh, honestly, that. You know what? I'll get back to you on that one. It's, oh, honestly, just came out of my mind. But uh, where do you have the um, negative divergence, basically? Like, yeah, and negative and positive divergence. So uh, that's the one. Yeah, there we go. So when you have on the MACD, for example, or like any other oscillator, uh, you have like. Um, a move let's say it's something you have an incline here but actually you know like a move like this but actually it's declining so um and then yeah this is this could play out this is your you know indicator could could work but um look that's why i'm saying i have this on the chart but i do i look at it all the time and do i refer to it no not really um i do like some other you know things and i try to keep it simple because um you you can actually you know screw screw your mind very quickly with all the indicators and honestly try plotting all of them if somehow you manage to see some sort of a trend some sort of like something that works like percentage wise works more or like it has a higher probability in, in your trading that you know let's say you're looking at macd here and thinking oh great you know what it crossed uh the uh, it crossed the you know the the faster one crossed the slower one and let's let's go in let's go long and uh but what about let's say here it crossed it here and then you're thinking okay great i'm gonna go long here, like at this point and uh this is where you go long it kind of lift went a little bit higher and then look it's sold off and then like you this is where the moment you're starting to panic and thinking you know what maybe i got it wrong and you you exit it and then it kind of you know for the next day the next day it's, it kind of starts pushing back up so this is the moment the, the frustration with these indicators sometimes and you know you think that you're right and you think that everything's kind of straightforward but actually actually not so that's why i i do have them just uh you know for that maybe extra confirmation but um i do like my support and resistance barriers and in general look not everything is as clear as it sounds or maybe you know um but um you still have to be careful the the, the more important thing is that when you're entering a trade is you straight away think how you can get out of it and can, can how you can get out of it um and uh you know what let's say and in case it goes against you how far you can allow it to go against you that's what you need to think of all the time when you're entering trades how much i can allow it 
to go against me. If you cannot allow, let's say, more than 10 pips, okay, that's great. Just re, re, get rid of it at 10 pips. You can allow 200 pips, okay, you know, that's fine as well. But um, just kind of keep that in mind all the time. Oh, and by the way, Euro USD. So I don't know, Marine, uh, Marine 84, I don't know if it, um, um, if it helps. I hope. Look, I'm not the, 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 the super awesome guy in general, the super knowledgeable guy or something like that. But I just go from my experience and just um, sharing it with you. You know, somebody likes my, you know, what I say, somebody doesn't. But okay, you know, what, what, can, I, what can I do? Look, Euro USD. Um, so far, so good. So far, this is this barrier is providing good resistance. Yes, we have uh, pierced through it a few times, but um, uh, the question is that uh, we're struggling to remain above it. So that's kind of pointing a little bit more towards maybe a stronger dollar. I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. But um, again, at this point, look, as long as we stay below the 1.1095 territory right here somewhere. I am going to consider maybe a larger correction here to the downside uh, towards the uh, towards this upside support line and this 1.1012. But if we do start pushing above this area, I in order for me to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels, a push above this 1.1145 territory is required. And then although I have my arrow all drawn all the way here, actually, I'm going to go slowly, initially aiming for the 1.12 territory somewhere around here and then going slowly to the upside. That's it. So guys, uh, so yeah, thank you very much for joining in and watching this one till the end. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, I really appreciate your time. Honestly, really do. So it's I'm talking about like for, for 50 minutes and uh, you're still with me. So, uh, but even if you're not, if you're just jumping in for the uh, certain instrument in there, you know, still uh, honestly, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. That's uh, I really really appreciate that. Um, and of, of course, thank you very much for your rockets. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a little rocket there uh, instead of a like. So uh, whenever you click on that one, I'm not saying that you have to do it right now. No, just I'm saying that in general, when you do that, fantastic. You know, I, unfortunately, I cannot see who's doing it, but in general, everybody, thank you, thank you for, uh, thank you a lot. You, you are the ones that uh, keep me going. So. Have a beautiful trading day. Remember, ECB, uh, then uh, half an hour after the interest rate decision, the, uh, Christine Lagarde, press conference, yep. Uh, in between, uh, US GDP numbers. So basically that period might be a little bit on the you know, volatile side. So just be cautious and careful. And then the market opens, opens up, the US market opens up. So yeah, uh, just be careful and cautious in that. If we didn't see much movement yesterday, in the indices maybe it kind of left it for today just saying just saying yeah so have a nice trading day stay safe have your stop losses in place risk only what you can afford to lose and everything will be fine and i'll see you tomorrow six o'clock gmt time thank you very much and bye-bye If you want to continue to please the trading gods, subscribe to our channel for a blessing.